Hello there and welcome. In this episode we're going to do something that a lot of you have been asking for and I'm talking about a stackable inventory. When we started this series we created our inventory system and back then I told you that there are a lot of different inventory types, a lot of different ways you can do it and I decided to go on a item per slot inventory so it will be a much more realistic inventory. Now of course maybe you don't want this kind of system so I'm also going to show you how to create a stackable inventory and this will basically be an inventory that will allow multiple items of the same kind to be stacked together and we're going to be able to uh, divide them into separate stacks if we have multiple stacks. So for example if we pick up a rock it will go to the empty slot and then when we pick up another rock it will go to the same slot and of course we're going to be able to limit the size of each stack. So before we continue I just want to tell you that this episode and maybe the next one that will deal with the stackable inventory are optional. If you don't want a stackable inventory you don't have to. Now another thing that I need to tell you is that you should back up your project at this point because our inventory system is something that is rooted in many different systems in our game. So now that we start to upgrade the system and change the code, some things may break. I will really try to make everything as clean as possible and I will try to cover all the different bugs and possibilities, but just know that if your game is working good right now, it may break at some point or maybe there will be some kind of situation that I have not covered and it's also a general advice to always back up your projects anyway, right? I always back up my projects even if I'm not going to do any kind of big change so you can copy it and upload it to GitHub or maybe you copy it on a drive so you have a separate copy of the project and if something goes bad you can always go back to the previous version. Now if we open our canvas and our inventory screen, which is the UI of our inventory, we still want to use our inventory system the way it is. We still want to have items inside because this will allow us the dragging and the dropping functionality. So we still want to have inventory items inside of each slot and then we are going to simply drag them. We can also drag them into the quick slot and we can pick up and instantiate new inventory items from our resources into these slots and then we also have our inventory system itself which is the code that controls the inventory. So we don't want to change this functionality. What we do want is to have more items inside each slot and the way we're going to do it is by simply adding another variable inside our inventory item that will store the amount of items it has. So if we have a stone over here, it will say one stone. But then when we pick up another stone, we're simply going to add it into this one and we're going to increase the variable to be two. And then we're going to check each one of these slots for the amount of items instead of checking all the slots for the amount of items in each slot. So we're simply going to have to expand our looping so it will not just search for one item in each slot but will look for multiple items in each slot. So as I told you there will be many different things that we need to change to upgrade our system into a stackable one but this is what we're going to do. Of course we're also going to have some kind of UI that is going to show us how many items we have because the player has no access to the inspector, he can only see the UI and the game itself. So we're going to open our inventory item and inside we're going to add a new variable over here. Public int amount in inventory. And we can also set some kind of default value to be one. So when we pick up the item, it will be one, but later we can just add it to the existing item. So we're going to basically make sure that the first item that we pick up has this count and not zero. Next, we're going to add some kind of UI that will show the amount of items. So right now we're just going to remove the fishing rod and we're going to add a text mesh pro as a child 
of the slot. And you may already understand that this will change a lot of our methods because we checked if there is a child inside a slot, it means that there is something. And now we are going to have a child that is not the item. So we are going to have to change a few methods to check for the actual item and not just for a child. But right now we're going to deal with this. So we're going to select the text. We're going to click over here. We're going to hold Alt and then click on stretch. So it will stretch the entire text into this slot. And then we're going to change the font a bit. We're going to set the size to about 28. And of course it depends on your game. We're going to set it to zero and we're going to click over here, extra settings and change the margins a bit. We're also going to set it to be at the bottom and to the right. And then we're going to change the margins to be right 12 and bottom eight. So it will be over here. And now if we add more numbers, it will always go to this side. So always when you add some text, make sure that if the text changes, it will move to the right direction. It will not just go over here or something like that. Now we can also add some outline to the text, maybe increase the size, but this is up to you. We can change the font to be the font that we use in the game, but I think that this font is rather nice. Another thing that we want to add on our text is a canvas group. So we're going to add a canvas group and we're going to disable interactable and block raycasts because remember that we're going to have items inside that we want to drag and drop. So because this thing will be in front of the item, right? We need this counter to be in front of the item. It will block our mouse and we won't be able to drag it. So by doing this, by adding this canvas group, we can disable it from actually affecting the mouse and it will just be a UI that is not interactable and will not block our raycasts. We are going to rename it to be amount txt. And then on the slot itself, we're going to add a new script and we're going to name it inventory slot. And this inventory slot script will basically handle the UI, it will handle the counter. So we're going to remove all of this. So we're going to have a public text mesh pro UGUI amount txt. And we're going to have a public inventory item, item in slot. So this will be a reference to the item that is inside the slot. Then we're going to add the update method because we want to update the UI every frame. And we're going to find the item that is inside this slot. So it's going to be an item and we're going to have some kind of method, check inventory item. And this method will look for the item that is inside the slot. Then we need to check if it actually found an item, if there is an item, right? Because there will not be an item every single time. So if item is not null, it means that it actually found an item, then we're going to set the item to be the item in slot. But if it is null, then the item in slot will be null. And this means that Maybe we took out the item from the slot. Maybe we consumed it. And let's also generate this method. Then we also need to check if the item in slot is not null and then set the UI. Now, if the amount text is not null, well, actually, if the item in slot is not null, then we're going to set it inside the amount text. So first of all, we're going to take the amount text and we're going to game object set active. We're going to set it to be active, the actual UI. Then we're going to set the text inside of this amount text. So amount text text. And we're going to use these braces and a string just to get the value. And then we need to put a dollar sign so it will detect that this is a variable. And we're going to use our item and slot 
and reach for the amount in inventory. So it will basically print the amount in inventory of this item on the UI. Another thing that we want to do is take this amount text game object and actually transform. And we're going to use a method named set as last sibling. And this is just because we want to always make sure that this text is in front of the item that is inside of the slot. So if we go over here and if we're going to pick up an item from the floor or maybe craft it, then it's just going to be added into the slot. But when it's added into the slot, it's going to be the first child, right? So this thing, well, it actually, it's going to be the second child, right? So the UI, the amount text will be behind the item. And we don't want this to happen. We want the amount text to always be the last sibling. So it will be in front of the item, right? So by writing this line of code, we can make sure that this will always be in front of the item that gets added into the slot. Now, if there is no item inside the slot, we're simply going to set the UI to false, meaning invisible, right? There is no need to show zero if there is nothing inside. Now, we also want to add the code for this method, and this method will simply check if there is an inventory item inside of this slot. And we can do this by a simple for each. Transform child in transform. So it will basically go over all of the children. If child get component inventory item. So if one of the children has an inventory item, it means that this is the inventory item. So we're going to return this child. We're actually going to return the entire component because this is what we want to return. We want to return an inventory item. And of course, if it doesn't find anything, it's going to return null. So if it's not going to find an inventory item, it means that there is no inventory item. It means that the slot is empty and then it will return it over here. It will be null. So we know that there is nothing inside the slot. Now we need to take our amount text and add it over here as a reference. Of course, this should not be public because we're not going to drag anything over here. It will be updated automatically, but we're going to keep it public just so we can see it for debugging and later we can make it private, okay? Now, before we can actually add something, we need to deal with one method that we had previously because at the moment it will check if we have something inside the slot and it will see that there is something inside the slot so it will skip to the next slot. But we want to tell him that don't worry about this item inside because this is just the UI. So as long as you have one item, it still means that the slot is empty. And this will happen inside the inventory system itself. So when we add a new item over here, add to inventory, we check what is the next free slot. So inside, we check if the child count is zero. And only if it's zero, it means that the slot is empty. But right now, the way we upgraded the system, there is something inside, which is the UI. So we need to change this to one. So only if there is one item inside one child, it means that the slot is actually empty because the child is just the UI and not an actual item. Of course, we can also check if there is an inventory item inside and then it will return false or true. But this is just a simpler way to upgrade the system that we already had. At this point, it should already work. So let's close this. Let's add some kind of item, for example, a stone, prefab stone. Where's the player? Let's just add a stone over here. And if we pick up this stone, it should already work and update the UI. 
So right now we don't have anything over here, but when we pick up this stone, it's going to say one. I hope you can see it. So we know that we have one stone and at the moment we still cannot stack items. We did not add the code. We just added this small UI that is going to get updated by itself. And if we click on the stone, we can see over here amount in inventory is one. Now, before we continue, we just want to change all the other slots to be the same way. So it's going to take a few seconds, but I'm going to fast forward. Okay, so we simply made all of our slots to support the new system. Make sure to add an inventory slot script on all of the slots. Make sure to add the reference for the relevant text that is the child itself. And also reset the position of the UI so it will be in this exact position. So there's still many things that we need to do in order to upgrade the system. And the next thing we want to deal with is the stacking of the items. So when we pick up two items of the same kind, they will go to the same stack and we can limit the stack. Later, we can also divide the stacks. And if we drag an item of the same kind on the stack that has the same item, it will just merge them together. So the regular things now again, different stackable inventories work differently. Some allow you to divide them, some give you other options. So I'm just showing you the basic way to create a stackable inventory and then you can expand upon it. So now we're going to open our item slot script. And this is basically the script that deals with different events that occur when we drop an item on this slot. So previously we used this to get the item that is inside the slot, but it's not relevant because we're going to have more than one child and we just want to change the way it works. So we're just going to comment this out because we don't really need this at the moment. So control K C and now it will give us this error because it still looks for the item. It checks if there is an item in the slot because if there isn't, then it's going to set our new item in the slot. But instead, we're just going to say transform child count is smaller or equals one. So if we have one item and we know that this one item is the UI itself, it means that the slot is empty and then it means that we can add a new item. But if we have more than one item, then it means that the I, the slot is occupied. Of course, we don't need to say less because we cannot have less than one item. We will always have the UI inside, but it's just good practice. And now it will work the same way without this part. Nothing has changed. But if we try to drag a stone on another stone, it will see that there is a stone inside, but we still want to add them together. We want to merge them. So we need to get this item and check what is the actual item that is inside. So we don't care that there is an item inside. We want to know which item so we can know if we want to merge them or not. For this, we're going to have a method over here outside and it will return an inventory item and we're going to name it get stored item. And it will basically just take the first child. So return transform get child zero. So it will return the first child, but we also want to get the inventory item itself, the component. So it will return the inventory item, which is the first child. And we know that it will always be the first child because the UI will always become the last sibling. So now we can always get this inventory item and we simply create this as a method because we're going to do this several times so we don't have any duplicated code. It's better to create a method. Now over here, if we have an item in the slot, so if 
the slot is empty, right? This means that the slot is empty, but else the slot is not empty. We want to do something else. We want to check if the item that is inside the slot is the same as the item that we're dragging inside. First, we want to get a reference to the dragged item. So inventory item, dragged item. And we do this because we don't always want to reference this long line. So we're simply going to cut this and get this item and store it inside this small variable. And then we can use this small variable over here instead of writing this long line each time, okay? So this is going to make the code a bit cleaner. Now we're going to check if the dragged item, it's actually dragged with two Gs. So if dragged item name, this name, and don't get confused, usually when we have name, this is the field that we have, but this is the name of the game object. So these are two different things. This is a built-in thing that comes with every game object. It simply gives you the name of the game object. So for example, stone clone or stone uh, something, but this will give you the field of the name. So this will usually be the clean name, right? This name, because inside the dragged item, which is the inventory item, we have over here a string, this name. We have this description, this functionality, right? So always use this name instead of just name. Uh, and then we're going to check if the dragged item name is the same as get stored item, this name, because this will give us the stored item and this will give us the dragged item. And then we simply compare to see if it's the same item. If there is a stone inside and we drag a stone, we want to be able to merge them together. And now we're simply going to check this. And if both of them are true, well, if they're the same thing, then we want to merge them together. And what we're going to do this is by simply taking this item that we dragged, we're going to reach into the amount, amount in inventory, and we're going to add to it the amount that we had inside the dragged item, right? So amount in inventory, and we'll basically increase the amount in inventory inside of the stored item by the amount in the dragged item. So maybe we're dragging a stack of two items or three items, right? And we're dropping it on this stored item. So we're simply going to add them together and then we're going to destroy the dragged item because we don't need it anymore. We only need one item and we already have it stored inside. So destroy immediate, drag drop, item being dragged. And this is the item that we originally had. We don't want to destroy this because this is just a reference. So we're going to destroy this item that is being dragged. Now, we also want to have a stack limit because what if we have 10 items stored and then we're adding another 30? Maybe we want to have some kind of limit. We don't want to just keep adding things into the stack. We also want to limit the stacks. For this, we're going to open our inventory system. And over here at the top, we're going to add another variable. We're going to name it public int stack limit. And we're going to set some kind of default value, let's say two items, so it will be easier to test this. So of course you can always change this value using the code. For example, the player upgraded his backpack and then you're going to increase the stack limit, maybe it's an RPG and then he upgraded some kind of skill that will increase the stack limit. So we're going to set the limit to be two items. Let's do it three items, okay? This will be the limit. And now we need to add this as a condition when we want to merge items. So over here, when we're merging them, we also want to have a method that will check if the limit has been exceeded. So we're going to have a 
method that is going to return a bool is limit exceeded. I hope that this is the right way that's spelled. And we're going to pass in inside the inventory item, drag item, because we're going to call this method over here. So we need a reference to the dragged item. And over here, we're simply going to check if the dragged item amount in inventory and the get stored item amount in inventory, if the sum of them is bigger than the limit, then it means that the limit has been exceeded. Now, in order to compare it, we're going to add all of this into parentheses. So both of these will go into parentheses and then we can simply check if it's bigger than inventory system instance stack limit. Now we can also add the stack limit over here, but it should go inside the inventory system because we may want to use it in different places and not just in this one script. Now it's going to check if the amount in the drag item plus the amount in the get stored item is bigger than the limit, that means that we exceeded. So return re turn true, else return false. And we're simply going to check this over here before we actually add them together, right? Because we want to know if there is room, if the limit is not exceeded when we're going to add them. So we first check this and then we add them permanently, okay? So now we're going to add this as a condition. So over here, we're going to say, and is limit exceeded is false. And of course we need to pass in the dragged item. So only if the limit is not exceeded, then we're going to allow to actually merge them together. Merge dragged item and stored item. Check if both items are of the same kind and the limit is not exceeded. So now this should work, but we still have this method over here, this add to inventory that will still add them separately into a new slot, right? Because it's going to find the next free slot. That's why we need to change things over here to check if there is this kind of item in the inventory, just added to this item instead of adding the item into a new slot. So we're going to change things a bit. We're going to have a game object named stack, and we're going to have a method check if stack exists. And the stack should be of this kind of item, right? We're going to generate this. And if there is a stack with this item, so if the stack is not null, else, so if there is a stack for this item, then we're simply going to increase it by one. Else we're going to do all of this. We're going to take all of this code. We're not going to touch the trigger pop-up because we want this to happen. We want this to run in all situations, but all of this, also the sound itself, let's just leave the sound. So we're going to take all of this and we're going to place it inside the else. So this will be the old way we did it, right? We're going to check if there's a new slot, if we don't have a stack available. But if we have a stack of this item, then we're simply going to increase it by one. So we're going to take this stack. We're going to get a component on the stack, which is the in 
inventory slot this time, right? Not inventory item, inventory slot. Inside we have a reference to the item in slot, which is the inventory slot. And we're going to simply increase the amount in inventory. We can simply do this, right? We're simply going to increase it by one. Or you can do if it's easier for you to understand. Now we need to add the code into this method over here. So we're simply checking which next slot is available, but we also check if there is a slot that has an item of the same kind. So we don't have to set this item into a new slot, but in the stack of the same kind, right? So we go over all of our slots. Then we try to get a component that is named inventory slot and obviously all of our slots will have an inventory slot, but we still want to get this. And then we check if the inventory slot is not null and there is actually an item inside. Then we're going to get the name of this item and compare it to the name of the item that we want to add. And if the limit is also not exceeded because we don't want to add an item into a stack that is already full, right? because we check the limit only over here when we drag the item. But what if we add an item using this method? This is usually run when we pick up an item from the ground or when we craft an item. So this is just a different method of adding items into the inventory. So we want to check the limit over here as well. And if all of this is true, then we're going to return this slot and this will return the slot. And it means that this is not null, so it's going to increase the item inside by one. And now if we take our stone and we duplicate it, we can test everything out. Let's duplicate this one. So now we have all of these four stones, but before we can actually make this to work, I also remembered that on our stones and on all of the items that we can pick up, we have this interactable object script. And inside we have this check before we actually pick up an item. We basically check if what is the amount of available slots. So we're not trying to get the next available slot because we do this inside this method. We simply check how many empty slots we have because sometimes we want to add two items simultaneously. Sometimes we want to craft two items and add them into the inventory. So we want to check how many available slots. And at this point, it's still going to check if there is zero children and then it will know that the slot is empty. But as I told you, this should change to one because we have a UI inside and the UI will be counted as a child. So just change this check slots available and change this over here. And you can find this method inside the inventory system. Now there is yet another thing that we need to fix, something that I realized. And this is just a problem that happens because of the way Unity works. If we pick up this stone right now, it's going to be added into this slot, but because the inventory system is disabled at this moment, so is this script. It means that it's not getting updated and then the reference for the item slot is still not available. So now, if we don't open the inventory and we pick up another stone, it will not know that there is a stack inside of the inventory. It will think that there is no stack and it will add it separately. So if I pick up another stone and I open it, we can see that it added it into the other slot. 
because this script will only run when I enable it for the first time. So for this, we need to somehow set the reference before we even open our inventory. We know that this update method only runs when the script is active, but if we want to set this item in slot before this happens, we can simply have some kind of method named, it should be public, void set item in slot, and or maybe update item in slot and then we're going to set the item in slot and use this check inventory item method to set the item and this we can run even if the script is disabled right we don't need to wait for the update method then in the inventory system before we check for the item in slot we're simply going to say inventory slot set set update item in slot and now it's going to update it even if the inventory is disabled of course if you want this to happen at the moment that we pick up something we can simply go to the script and call this method over here as soon as we actually pick up something so we're simply going to get the stack inventory slot and this way it's going to update the item as soon as we pick up the item. So you can do this this way or you can just check for this and update this over here when we pick up the second thing. And now we can really finally test this out. And now we have nothing in the inventory. We can pick up this stone. We can see one. And now if we pick another one, it's going to automatically add it into this slot. Now we can move them and we cannot test the merging because if we pick up another stone, it will get merged together. But when we pick up a fourth stone, this limit has been exceeded. So it will add it into a new stack, right? So of course we can pick this up and that will say two, three. And this way it's starting to actually become a stackable inventory but we still have a few things to deal with for example what if we want to divide each stack we want to basically drag this and then hold some kind of key maybe shift and then when we drop it it will ask us or it will just divide it into separate items so all of this we're going to do in the next episode because we still have other things to upgrade as well and even when we're done with all of these examples, we are still going to find from time to time things that we need to convert. So that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're still not subscribed. It will help me a lot. Please leave a like and I'll see you next time.